So recently I've been taking a look at the Minus Forum UN1245. A lot recently I've been testing it out on a wide variety of different games and different tests. And one of the most consistent problems that I've been finding is that even though this is an 8 core 12 thread CPU from Intel, it's not exactly performing to a level that you would expect from an 8 core 12 thread CPU. So I'm going to run this specific system on a wide variety of different tests just to show you some baseline results and I'm going to show you how you can improve the performance of this system by such a significant margin that you almost question why this system is even being sold in the way that it is right now. Now at its stock 45 watt TDP the multi-core performance that we actually ended up getting in the new Cinebench 2024 benchmark was actually what got me into even wondering what exactly the problem is because even though it's an 8 core 12 thread cpu it was performing noticeably worse than some amd based 6 core 12 thread cpus ending up with a multi-core performance score of 383 which actually barely was able to beat the 11th gen i5 11 320h which only has four cores and eight threads but does also boast a higher TDP, which means that each individual core itself can actually get more juice to it. Now, if we looked at the single core performance numbers, we can tell by the almost chart topping numbers of the 12450H that it's not the individual cores that are the problem, it's the fact that they cannot get enough power. Now, luckily in the BIOS of the system itself, you can go onto there and you will find an option to adjust the TDP. So of course, by stock, it comes with a TDP of 45. I decided to raise it all the way up to 60. There are some caveats that I need to explain before you go off and do the exact same thing to your system. For one, and really the biggest thing that's going to deter you from doing this is that the stock power supply that this system comes with is 90 watts at its stock tdp of 45 watts while under load the system is pulling from the wall around 66 watts at the most raising the default tdp all the way up to 60 ends up pushing our core wattage usage all the way up to 87 we're pretty much at the exact limit of what this power supply can actually handle and that's not a great thing for most power supplies you're going to want to have at least some headroom usually around 30 to 20 percent and we just do not have that in this case now it's not the end of the world because you're more than likely not going to have a workload where you're going to have the cpu at 100 percent utilization for extended periods of time but if that is something that you are going to be doing then you really should not consider doing this that could end up damaging your power supply really the only reason i'm doing this is just to show you how much performance is left on the table for minis forums setting such a low default tdp but now that we have the raised TDP, we can see what the Cinebench 2024 scores actually end up being. And our multi-core performance actually ends up jumping up to 544. Pretty much finally beating out all the Ryzen 6 scores and just being right under the 8 core. Though there is a noticeable gap between the AMD 8 core and this 8 core from Intel. But we do get a massive pretty much 200 point jump just from raising the TDP from 45 watts up to 60 the pretty massive jump overall of course these gains are only going to be felt on benchmarks that end up using pretty much the entirety of the cores themselves as you can see here by the scores in geekbench and that is geekbench 6 we end up with a single core score of 2248 and a multi-core score of 6649 again this is at the stock 45 watt tdp once we actually raise the TDP to 60 watts, our single core performance does actually end up dropping a little bit. So this is more of a margin of error kind of thing. But our multi-core performance does actually end up jumping to 8,356. So it does consistently see a pretty massive increase in the multi-core performance. Now, just to show you how it only affects the CPU performance here, we have some games with their built-in benchmarks running. Here you're looking at Bioshock Infinite running with the very high graphics settings at the full 1080p resolution. And as you can see, there is no real meaningful gain between the two systems. 
slight differences in the 1% lows, but in general, our averages are pretty much identical. If you look at those frame time charts, they look very, very similar, which means that overall, when you're actually playing the game, you're going to have pretty much identical levels of performance, which makes sense. If you look at the amount of power that we're using here, we're not even using the full 45 watts by default, let alone using the 60 that are now available to the system. So it makes perfect sense that we would see no meaningful uplift whatsoever in terms of the overall performance. And this trend does continue on into Mountain Blade Banner Lord, running with the lowest in-game graphics settings. And as you can see between the two systems here, again, no noticeable difference whatsoever. Power usage is again showing that we're not even utilizing the full 45 watts, let alone needing 60. And all of this makes sense because of the fact that we are working with just the 48 EU version of the UHD graphics. But as about half of the amount of cores that you would see on the full size iris xe igpu so it is an extremely cut down version and because of that it really isn't limited by power especially at the default clock speed that it has not exactly a lot of wattage that needs to go to power 48 tiny little graphics cores and the last game that I wanted to take a look at was Rainbow Six Siege running with its built-in benchmark. And you'll see that this actually has the most meaningful uplift that we actually ended up seeing between the two systems, specifically a increase in the 1% lows and in the FPS averages. And this was a consistent uplift across three different benchmark runs where we would see a surprising uplift in terms of the overall FPS average and 1% lows. And in general, you can see that the frame time charts do look better, though it's not an earth shattering difference in terms of the performance uplift. It is there. You will see that we are utilizing a little bit more power, but we're also hitting some higher temperatures. So in general, it does seem like the system is doing a bit more, though that little bit of extra wattage usage is translating to some noticeably higher temperatures so as you could very clearly see there is some limitations with the way that minisform has implemented this system it would have been nice if we had gotten a full max version of it that would actually turn up the tdp but also came with the appropriate power supply if it had a 120 watt power supply you could run this at 60 watts pretty much all day without any problems but as it stands right now with the included power supply i would not recommend doing this if you plan on actually fully utilizing all the cores all the time this might be nice for those moments where you just need that extra render time it's just going to speed things up a little bit without really pushing that power supply to its limit but really overall i recommend just keeping your system at the stock setting yes i know you're leaving quite a lot of performance on the table but that is kind of how this system was intended to be and it makes sense why it's priced at the level that it is though at that price the amd products actually do start to give some very decent levels of competition as long as they can go up to 25 watts but this is an intel cpu at 45 watts that can't even keep up with systems at 25 watts from the competitors that's a pretty rough position to be in anyways i want to thank you guys for watching if you enjoyed it be sure to subscribe and of course you can always become a channel member for as little as a dollar a month. I'll catch you guys next time.